Welcome back to another episode of the Reckless Wrench Garage. As you can see, we're in pretty much the same place we were recently on the Suburban with the steering stuff. However, this time it is by request. As you may have already noticed, we have the complete PSC Hydro Assist kit installed on this. I was asked a couple questions about it, so I have footage from when I installed it, and we're going to go ahead and put that together for you. Then we're going to follow it up with what I should have done to begin with, by installing the off-road design uh, weld-on frame repair kit for the steering box. If you noticed in the last video, this the steering box twists pretty good on the frame. And to prevent any catastrophic failure later on, we're going to go ahead and do the frame repair kit right now. And if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, put them down in the comments below. <laughs> You may be wondering what kind of information you can really get from watching us replace the steering system with the bolt-in kit. Well, we sometimes wonder the same thing. But it's more than just a few bolts here and there. We also have some tips to share with you throughout the video. First things first, we're going to remove the entire bracket that holds the power steering pump and alternator. This will make replacing the pump a lot more comfortable. removing the steering gearbox, you may find this trick useful. Take a pull strap, wrap it around the gearbox and cinch it down. As you loosen and remove the mount bolts, the strap will hold the gearbox in place, allowing you to continue using both hands rather than bracing the box with one. A pull strap like this one works much better than a ratchet strap because of the ability to control the release, as you can see here.
when you order the PSC kit, you're going to get this bracket that holds the reservoir, but that bracket doesn't have any kind of bracket to attach it to your engine or tubing around it. You just have a couple of holes that you can line up to something. Uh, all I did was take a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal, I uh, bent, bent it at 90 degrees, drilled the holes to line up with the bracket that came with the reservoir, and then drilled some holes to line up with the same bracket that the um, that the positive wire bolts to on the side of the alternator bracket. It's held up pretty well. Once all the overhead parts were installed, it was time to install the hydraulic ram. I chose to mount one end to the truss on the axle using weld-on tabs, and the other end on the tie rod with weld-on tabs as well. Most important part of installing the ram is making sure to check clearance throughout the complete travel and make sure to center the ram in its travel along with centering the wheels to find the mounting location for the other end. Well, before you get started on putting those plates in, you're supposed to check the frame for any cracks and take care of those, and I found one right there. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go ahead and stop drill this and grind it, weld it, clean it up, and then get those plates in position. the installation of this, there's a set of instructions on the Off-Road Design website. Just to make sure I knew what I was doing, I got a hold of Jake over at uh, Robert's Custom Trucks. He recently did this, and I enjoy harassing him. So, thank you Jake. I appreciate your assistance. Now I'm going to see if I can squirt some paint on here before the wind picks up too much. Bolt the steering box on, hook everything up, and uh, see if I got rid of any of the flex. If this video helped you out, that's awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. If you guys have any questions about anything else, feel free to put it down in the comments below. And until next time, stay reckless.